All right, I'm gonna make another uh, hardcore attempt at uh, Valheim here. Under no illusions as far as uh, being able to successfully beat all five bosses. Um, I think you gotta be pretty damn good at this game to actually pull that off, and I'm sure people have. Uh, for those of you unaware, the way hardcore works, because it's not actually a setting in this game, is uh, you make a new character, you load up a, a brand new random seed, and uh, you die, that's it. You delete the character, you delete delete the world. And uh, let's see let's see how far I can get on this one. We're gonna go with uh, hardcore the lacquer for the name. And uh, let's, uh, let's be, be like super duper pale. I don't think we'll be that pale. Let's see what kind of hair here. Like a bald one? Not quite. That's pretty close. So, I think we can go with that. Castaway beard there. I like the castaway beard. Let's do that. Ish. Yeah, I think that'll work like that. I've done a couple of these. Um, had several false starts. And I uh, had one run where I actually got uh, got past the Elder Boss and uh, had a uh, misadventure sailing and uh, inadvertently ran aground in the plains and the fog and some fuelings took care of me rather quickly. <laughs> and by rather quickly, I mean I'm pretty sure I got one-shotted by a spear chucker. So, yeah, they'll do that when when you're not ready for the planes. They just kill you instantly. Uh, so yeah, we'll call it Hardcore here. We're done. Maybe. Oh, I see. I already have one here. Guess I should, uh... Oh wait, I don't want to... I don't want to delete that one, actually, because I wanted to save that seed because there's a cool mountain in that seed. Ah, never mind. We'll just go ahead and nuke that one. Screw it. There we go. So, hardcore. Seed here, anybody interested? There it is. Highlighted for your convenience. I'll wait a second. And, boom. Click done. Click start. We go beginning of another hardcore run um, yeah we'll see how many how how far I make it before I die uh, let's see here maybe go for a day count make it to day 100 and uh, should be able to get it should be able to at least get the elder dead by day 100 if I'm not dead before then <laughs> Uh, people considering this game I, I can't recommend it enough I have uh, over 400 hours in it and uh, there's there's quite a few mods out there available I'm currently doing this mod list um, I have tried some of them um, they're uh, uh, you get them you can get them uh, via Nexus that's where I that's where I've downloaded a bunch from. And some of them are simply some UI mods just to make it look a little nicer and cleaner. And uh, some of them are pretty elaborate uh, additions or changes. Worth checking out um, if you have this game and you've been playing it a while and feel like maybe there you want to do something different with it. 
go check out the Nexus mods. Some some fun stuff there. Uh, there's even one that kind of turns it into uh, a pseudo RPG with like magical items that drop and such. But we're not going to be playing with any of that crap because this is hardcore. We have but one life. Here we are, flying in. I like to look down here, kind of try to see if I can get lay of the land here as we're flying in. Looks like we're flying over just some meadows. I'm trying to see if I can identify uh, some seashore. Because I kind of like to make my, my base down by the seashore. And I like to kind of beeline down there as well because Link is very important and will be very important here in the early game. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip making a club. So, be running around mostly defenseless here. Let's go talk to Hugin. Well met. Welcome to the 10th world, warrior. I am Hugin, sent here to guide you in your travels. The megaliths surrounding you are the sacrificial stones. They represent the forsaken, which you must slay in order to ascend to Valhalla, because we're in Viking purgatory. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five. You got Ikthir, the Elder, Bone Mass, Motor, and Yagluth. This stone is a veg vizier. I can never say that word. Veg vizier. These magical stones were scattered throughout the lands by Odin as signposts pointing toward the ritual grounds of the Forsaken. If inspected closer, this one will reveal the summoning place of Ikthur, your first prey. He is a mighty beast, so you need to properly arm yourself before even attempting to defeat him. I find uh, he's pretty easy to take out with fire arrows, especially if you have like an upgraded bow. Just a, you know, an upgraded crude bow. About 40 fire arrows or so. I I go in there with like, you know, a full stack of them just to be safe. But I like running around with a full stack of arrows most of the time. So, let's see. Okay, Ikthur's pretty close. We got a lot of meadows. And a little bit of black forest right there. It looks like maybe maybe some mountain there and maybe some mountain down here sometimes the metals can go right up to it as well but and hopefully there's water close by here and uh, for those of you who don't know I'm pretty sure it's always like this there is two raspberry bushes behind the Yagluth stone two mushrooms behind the motor stone. And as far as I know, it's like that on every map. At least it's been like that on every map I've played. So, good to know. Get some munchies right off the bat there. Help you run around a little better, etc. Yes, a tasty morsel. Found a snack. Consume it to improve your health and stamina. I was just saying. Be aware that before long you will grow hungry again, so you try to always have at least a couple of different meals ready. I, uh, you know, when, once I get things going, I, like, always have three stacks of food on me pretty much at all times. And, uh, well, you'll, you'll see. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty nutty about it. Um, maybe overly so, but... Especially in hardcore, I don't think you can actually be overly so with stuff like that. Let's see. Yes, yes, yes. Take stock of your inventory. Most items must be crafted. However, due to your recent departure from Midgard, you will have to recall the true shape of objects. Just pick things up and it will all come back to you, I'm sure. My lesser brother Munin tells me one can fashion a stone axe out of wood and stone. So. I don't think I'm quite there yet. Nope, need one more piece of wood for a stone axe. Now, normally I don't usually build the stone axe, but in this situation, I'm 
totally going to build the stone axe. One makes chopping down trees way easier than, say, punching them, for instance. Here, 1.5, 2.1, versus 15.9. And also, I don't see any water area nearby. Normally, I skip the stone axe and go straight for the flint and just build a crude little structure. Because the, fl the stone axe does get pretty pretty quickly outclassed by the flint axe. And also the flint axe is going to double as my weapon for the time being. So, this here. So I'm just going to pick a direction and kind of run in that direction. Until either I run into a biome I'm not ready for, in which case I will change directions. Or run into, hopefully, water. Because that's, like I said, that's where I want to build my base to start with. I'm kind of taking note of any, uh, any sites of interest I find, like a big berry bush patch or a big mushroom patch. Uh, beehive. Beehive is going to be real important to find. I like to find as many of those as I can because the honey is rather useful. <laughs> and it, and it, uh, gets produced pretty fast. You know, it's way faster than most of the most of the plants, if not all of the plants you farm, I should say. I'm just focusing on these little trees mostly because I don't want to uh, inadvertently drop a big one on my head. Oh, two graylings. And black. It dead what you get for trying to harass me. Because I... But yeah, like I was saying, uh, I focus on the smaller ones early and not the big trees because they kind of have a little bit of wonky physics to them. And... I have seen it do 50 plus damage in a hit with a tree falling on you. And if you notice, I only have 45 hit points. So I would really hate to have a hardcore run get get uh, derailed and over before it really began because I was unlucky and or stupid and dropped a tree on my head. Oh look, here we go, we got a mushroom patch of four. One, two, three, four. Oh, this is off. Okay, yeah, never mind. That was five, that looked weird. So what I like to do, come in here, and I zoom in, and mark it. Because these respawn. And now I have shroom four marked there. And after a few in game days, uh, actually it's more than a few, I think what it is is like five real, five real world hours, which I think works out to like every ten in game days. And here we are, found, found the shore. Now we just need to find a spot to build, at the very least, a temporary place. I'm hoping to find it that I just found right over there. A pre-existing structure. Those make excellent starter bases. Oh, ran out of spam. Yeah, the boars are important. I'm going to want to get a boar farm going. Um, relatively early, though not too early, because you gotta be able to get, uh, smelters online to build, uh, to build the butcher knife. But, very important, right? And hopefully I can get at least a one-star farm going, if not a two-star. So, found two more shrooms. Almost not worth marking a two-shroom spot, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. 